Armando Hasurangan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurangan. So, in this video, we will look at investigate bacterial resistance to antibiotics. Basically, how some bacteria are resistant to antibiotics and how do they acquire such resistance. Let's start by looking at how bacteria can be grouped. Well, we have two broad categories of bacteria. These are gram-positive and gram-negative. They differ in their uh, cell wall uh, membrane composition. See, if this was a gram-positive bacteria, if this was the outside of the cell, has an inner lipid membrane here and a thick peptidoglycan layer. Peptidoglycan is basically carbohydrates and proteins. The peptidoglycans constitute the bacterial cell wall. The gram-negative bacteria, on the other hand, has also an inner lipid membrane, but instead has a thin peptidoglycan layer, and then another outer lipid membrane. So it has two lipid membranes. These layers are what give gram-positive its purple color upon gram-staining and the gram-negative bacteria its pink color upon gram-staining. What's interesting is that gram-negative bacteria already have some form of resistance to a famous antibiotic called penicillin. Because, you see, penicillin targets proteins within the peptidoglycan layer. Therefore, penicillin would be very effective against gram-positive bacteria because the peptidoglycan layer is thick and it's the outermost layer. However, the penicillin are not effective, are not very effective against gram-negative bacteria because there is an outer lipid membrane in the way and also the peptidoglycan layer is quite thin over here. So that's an important reason why some antibiotics such as penicillin is not very effective against gram-negative bacteria. So what other types of antibiotic-resistant uh, mechanisms do bacteria have? Well, let's first go over some important parts of the bacteria. Here we have a typical bacteria. It is rod-shaped with a flagella. We are looking inside the bacteria now. One bacteria only has one chromosome, which is which is one circular DNA, basically. Here, the DNA is being synthesized because the bacteria is going to divide. However, this circular DNA is not the only genetic material that the bacteria carries. You see, the bacteria also have things called plasmids, which are like super small circular DNAs. And it is these plasmids that usually carry are the so-called resistant genes, genes that allow the bacteria to make things so that the bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics, hence resistant genes. For the plasmids to make these resistant things, it usually has to incorporate itself into the main DNA, the main circular DNA, but here I'm showing that the plasmid is synthesizing RNA straight away. In particular, mRNA. So mRNA is being synthesized from the plasmid. This mRNA will then be read by the ribosome to make polypeptides, to make proteins. And these proteins are what will become um, structures or enzymes that will help the bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. So let's have a closer look by zooming in. Now we will look at some examples that are not specific to one type of bacteria because each bacteria has its own unique uh, resistance gene, you can say. Now the antibiotic resistant genes, which is usually found on the plasmid, will result in the synthesis, as I mentioned, of proteins, polypeptides, that can form and become maybe uh, an antibiotic degrading enzyme, for example. So 
An antibiotic degrading en enzyme, a good example of this are beta-lactamases, which essentially breaks beta-lactam uh, rings. What are beta-lactams and what are the beta-lactams rings? Well, this is a beta-lactam ring and beta-lactam rings are found in penicillin. So penicillin is a beta-lactam uh, antibiotic. And this penicillin is active because the beta-lactam is a ring. It's closed. The ring is closed. However, when penicillin encounters a beta-lactamase in the bacteria, the beta-lactamase will break the beta-lactam ring, causing the penicillin to become inactive. And thus, penicillin will have no effect on the bacteria. There are many types of beta-lactamases and they are found in many types of bacteria, such as E. coli. The antibiotic-resistant gene uh, of a bacteria may also produce what's called an efflux pump. So what is an efflux pump? Well, imagine this is your bacteria with its cell wall, and you have the circular DNA of the bacteria. Well, some ba bacteria can produce these efflux pumps, which are found on the membrane. So when some types of antibiotics, such as tetracycline, which normally interferes with bacterial protein synthesis, is used, the bacteria can use the efflux pump to pump out the antibiotic. And so the antibiotic, tetracycline, will have no effect on the bacteria because it is pumped out. So we have looked at two mechanisms of antibiotic resistance so far the production of antibiotic degrading enzymes, and the production of the efflux pump. Some other bacteria also have the resistant genes to modify um, the antibiotic binding target. For example, penicillin, which is a beta-lactam, remember, targets penicillin binding proteins, which are found in the peptidoglycan layer of the bacteria. However, if the bacteria has the genes to modify the penicillin binding proteins, basically changing the structure of the protein, the penicillin is unable to bind to the protein anymore because the protein has changed. A great example of this type of resistance is found in the bacteria methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, which is essentially a bacteria that is resistant to the antibiotic methicillin. Methicillin does not work because the protein that methicillin binds onto is modified within the bacteria. And so methicillin has no effect. So those are some examples of how bacteria are resistant to antibiotics. But how do the bacteria acquire such resistant genes? Is it through evolution or how? Well, there are two ways they can acquire the resistant genes. One is through vertical gene transfer, and the other is through horizontal gene transfer. Vertical gene transfer is where the resistant gene is passed through bacterial replication. So basically, the bacteria actually acquires the gene during um, throughout evolution, you can say. For example, spontaneous mutations can occur for a resistant gene or something like that. But of course, this is rare and does take some time. The other way resistant, resistance gene are acquired is through horizontal gene transfer, where the resistant gene is actually transferred to a bacteria through three, uh, through three different means. The first is conjugation, or it can be through transduction, or through a process called transformation. These are important to know because they usually come up in exams. So let's take a look at each of them. Well, let's just say first we have a bacteria here with, with its circular DNA, and it actually has a plasmid that contains the resistant gene for a particular type of antibiotic. The bacteria can actually form what's called a pilus that will attach to the other bacteria. It's kind of like sex. And then the plasmid containing the resistant gene 
can be replicated and then passed on to the other bacteria. This process of horizontal gene transfer is called conjugation. Another form of horizontal gene transfer is through a virus called a bacteriophage. So here is a bacteria with its bacterial circular DNA. I should point out that this particular bacteria I am drawing has a resistance gene within it already. A bacteriophage here is a virus that only attacks bacteria, hence the name. The bacteriophage will inject its DNA, which is simply called the phage DNA, into the bacteria. The phage DNA can then incorporate itself into the bacterial DNA. And then, after some time has passed, when the time is right, the phage DNA will leave the bacterial DNA and then will begin replicating, destroying the bacterial DNA in the process. So the resistant gene that, that was part of the bacterial DNA will then be floating around inside the damaged bacteria. So the viral DNA is being replicated and new bacteriophages are being formed within the, the bacteria. The new viruses being formed uh, will, will pack up uh, the viral DNA that was replicated. The viral replication will cause the bacteria to lyse, releasing the virus, the bacteriophages containing the phage DNA out. However, there can be a bacteriophage that will actually contain a resistant gene from the bacteria. Because it accidentally packed the resistant gene of the bacteria instead of its own viral DNA. I hope that makes sense. And so the bacteriophage containing the resistant gene can then go attack another bacteria, but instead it will actually give a resistant gene to it. Now this process of horizontal gene transfer with the help of the bacteriophage is called transduction. The last type of horizontal gene transfer is called transformation, which is basically when another bacteria containing a resistant gene dies or lyses. It will then release the resistant gene. The resistant gene can then be picked up by another bacteria. The other bacteria will then incorporate it into its genome, allowing it to become resistant to some form of antibiotic. So those were important ways that bacteria um, acquires resistant genes for antibiotics. Conjugation, transduction, and transformation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.